Hey you guys, my name is Kelly and for the past month I've been working on a 1790s round gown and all of its underpinning. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my 1790s pair of jumps modeled after um, corsets, historical patterns and techniques by Jill Salin. Her book has patterned illustrations which I didn't necessarily grade up to fit me. I drafted my own based off the shapes that she provided and the analysis that she described in her work. And this book has been immensely helpful to me in achieving the right silhouette from the 1790s. Now the silhouette of the 1790s is very interesting as it is a part of a transitional period of fashion from the Georgian style of the 18th century to the new Regency style of the early 19th century. Most noticeable is the rising waistline from the late 18th century to the early 19th century, which I'll explain in more detail with my next video on the 1790s gown. But for now, changes in the structural undergarments is most important to note for the purposes of this video. The structural undergarment most used throughout the 18th century were called stays. The purpose of stays were to give the garment a smooth surface to drape over and create a cylindrical shaped body. In contrast, the Regency structural undergarment's purpose was to create a different silhouette that separated the chest to a wider, more desired shape. This was achieved with a piece of wood inserted into the center of a garment called the busk. These undergarments are known as corsets and are the beginnings of what is commonly thought of today as a corset. Because of rising waistlines, these structural undergarments were often made shorter as it was unnecessary to continue to have the longer shape of the stays, so these undergarments eventually got shorter. Because the 1790s were situated in between the two differing styles of the 1780s and the 1800s, styles may vary per individual of what was practiced in fashion. I decided to go for a style that was starting to move towards the early Regency styles and practices, but also stayed into elements of the 1780s style. So for my structural undergarment, I decided to make a pair of jumps that maintained the silhouette of the 18th century, while the amount of structure provided by boning was decreased as the Regency era went on and became fashionable for less structure to be provided. My shift is an early Regency style as seen with the low neckline, the shorter sleeves, and the lack of a drawstring or gathers in the front. I was mainly inspired by this piece from the Met and this piece from Colonial Williamsburg and both pieces are dated from the 1790s. Most of my shift is hand sewn which took an incredible amount of time that I do not want to discuss but I did add the gussets, but I did make a mistake and make the sleeves too short, so I just added an extra panel, but it looks intentional, so I'm okay with it. After I was done with my shift, I started work on the jumps, which began with me measuring my body and placing the measurements on the pattern pieces from the book. Then I made the most blasphemous thing to most people, I drafted my measurements on my fabric, then I cut them out, and then I ended up with the pieces that you saw just a brief second ago. After that, I pressed down the seams after sewing all of the seams together. Then I had the most brilliant idea of reinforcing the eyelet holes with a really thick canvas-like material. I sewed it down and I ended up with this. I then began to clip all of the corners of this, which took ages, but it turned out really nice when I turned it inside out and went all smooth. I'd finally had to face my fear and make the straps, which inevitably ended up being too big. Um, I put it on my dress form, but my dress form doesn't have the exact same measurements as me. She's a bit smaller. And even with her being smaller, I had to 
see my mistake that I had made and I made it too big. So my solution to that was folding over the strap ends and then eventually folding over and sewing down the front closure. Moving on to the eyelets, I did them all by hand and since I didn't have an owl I did this horrendous process which involved me sharpening a stick, jabbing the stick through the hole that I made, and although I didn't show it, I widened the hole with a pair of scissors. I didn't cut it, I just used the scissors as an owl because I do not have one. Then I hand sewed around the entire eyelet hole. And there's plenty of really fabulous tutorials on YouTube if you don't know how to do this, but I highly doubt you're coming to my video to learn how to make this. Although I'm not showing it here on video, I did make all of the boning channels, the few they were, with my machine. And that was my final step to completing my 1790s pair of linen jumps. I'm quite happy with how these turned out. I think they look quite beautiful. Of course, there's a few mistakes. Most noticeably, I didn't make the eyelets in the front asymmetrical, so they don't lace up quite perfectly as they normally would if I did it correctly. But that's an experience for next time. And that concludes the making of my 1790s pair of jumps. So if you want to stay around, my next video will be about the final making of my 1790s round gown. So stick around, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!